video on the site, give it a like. Hey, what the hell? Also ring bell when you subscribe. Hi, I'm Andre, and I thought I would take some time out to talk about The Addams Family, the new Addams Family movie, the animated one that's in theaters. I saw it actually not too long ago, but I got a lot of requests to talk about this movie. You were expecting maybe uh, The Addams Family? <laughs> Good one. Because I grew up on The Addams Family. That's my stuff right there. I watched the old television show when it was in reruns, the movies with Raul Julia and Angelica Houston. Those movies are great. Addams Family, Addams Family Values. I watched the cartoon show that came out after the movie. I even watched a little bit that new Adams Family TV show, the one that was on Fox Family before they became ABC Family. I like my Adams. Everybody loves the Adams. Everybody except for the Munsters. Because the Munsters are like, why do Adams get so much stuff, but the Munsters get nothing? I mean, we are some scary looking family too. Why don't we have a reboot? And that 1313 Mockingbird Lane pilot that failed does not count. We had the Munsters and the Munsters today. I need more Munsters. But let's talk about the Adams. Warning, this will probably have spoilers. I don't know if you can really spoil the Adams Family. <laughs> Guess what? Things work out. Just letting you know, I might reveal some stuff in the Adams Family movie. Don't want to spoil the experience if you don't want to know. So yeah, man, I didn't know how an Adams Family animated movie was going to be considering we've had so many Adams stuff in the past. And after watching this movie, it's okay. You know, it's nothing that's amazing. Um, it's fine. I was entertained by it, but I don't know if it was worth movie theater status. I feel like this could have been a thing that you could have put on streaming, on television as a special. I could definitely see this playing uh, in the future on ABC Family as part of their 31 Days of Halloween. Like when ABC Family next year looks at their schedule and is like, man, we got Hocus Pocus on here a lot of times. Can we put anything else in this schedule? They can be like, hey, this Adam's Family movie. There you go. The animation is good. It's not crazy Disney Pixar quality level, but it works. It's decent. And what I do appreciate about the animation is that they at least chose to make it unique. A lot of times when an animated movie is not made by Disney, Pixar, or DreamWorks, it tries to look like it's made from Disney, Pixar, and DreamWorks, and it doesn't have the same quality, the same look to it. So I appreciate this movie was like, look, we know we're a little bit cheaper than them, so let's just go with a unique style. And I like how they designed the Addams Family. They have a very unique style, almost closer to the original comics the Addams Family were based on. So I thought that was a really good idea. They go a little bit too far, though, with the human characters. Some of the human characters are so weirdly shaped or looking that I'm like, wait, are they Adams too? <laughs> you gotta keep the Adams weird, but keep everyone else looking kind of normal to make them stand out. If the human characters beside the Adams look weird too, then everything looks weird. So I thought that was a little odd choice, but hey, the Adams look nice. And that's all that matters. The voice cast, really good. You can tell that they really want to bring character to the Adams. So the whole time I'm listening to the movie, I'm not going, oh, that's Oscar Isaac. Oh, that's Chloe Grace Moretz. I'm going, oh, that's the Adam. Gomez and Morticia with Oscar Isaac and Charlize Theron, they kind of do like a different take or a different style of Gomez and Morticia, but it's still Gomez and Morticia. Chloe Grace Moretz and Finn Wolfhard as Wednesday and Pugsley, they kind of reminded me a lot of the Adams Family cartoons, Wednesday and Pugsley, especially Chloe Grace Moretz. She almost sounds exactly like the Wednesday that was in the Adams Family cartoon. They had that same kind of just sort of one tone demeanor. Nick Kroll as Uncle Fester straight up sounds exactly like the OG Uncle Fester from the black and white television show. They put their own spin on the character while still being true to the character and I appreciate that. They also have an Adams that I didn't know about so I don't know if this is like a new character that they made or maybe it's from the original comics and they never just used it that much and brought it back in this. But Jennifer Lewis, she's the one that's basically gotta judge this thing that Pugsley's gonna do. Jennifer Lewis's voice is just Mm, that is such a voice, that's a commanding voice. So it kind of makes sense to have her voice in Adams. Bette Midler up in there. It's just a little hocus pocus. And then you get Snoop Dogg as Cousin It. And you know all that is, is like, but you know, it's Cousin It with Snoop. As far as the humor, you know, some of it works. <laughs> some of it is the typical humor of the Adams being this different type of family. So of course they like things that are a little bit different, things that are dark or macabre. Anything that's kind of like weird and out there that they see as normal while everyone else is like, yes, well I never. That kind of humor is still in there and it still works. It's amazing how after all these years, after so many decades of Adams and so many types of Adams, that that specific one joke premise still works well when it's done well. There's a funny joke where they go to the coffee shop. There's a funny joke where Pugsley drinks out of a dog bowl and guys looking at him all weird. Matisha's like, don't drink all of it, Pugsley. Save some room for that man. And just little things like that. I'm like, I, I love that stuff. I'm, I'm always a sucker for those Adams doing their thing. Some of the jokes are puns. Some of them are one-liners. Some of them are the Adams having to make new references because of what the kids are into today. Like there's this one scene where there's one Adams member whose head is on fire and he's like, this party's gonna get lit. 
See, cause you know, his head's on fire and the kids say lit when they play in the Fortnites. It's PG, so they're probably not gonna be as risque in this movie as they were with some of the other Adams. But there's a couple times the jokes get a little in that PG-13 territory for a PG film. I see you, Adams. Okay, there's this one joke I gotta tell you. It's hilarious. So the movie's going along like normal. The Adams are hanging out. We're getting like little quick shots of them hanging out in the house. And then just all of a sudden, the movie just starts showing close-ups of feet. Like just full screen, giant pictures, rotating pictures of feet. <laughs> Some of them just regular feet, some of them with like flowers on them. And I'm like, what, 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 what is going on here? <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, did you take over the picture? There's a lot of feet here. I mean, I, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> Respect. But I was just like, why all of a sudden this movie just showed a lot of feet? And then they cut out to show you that it's on a computer and Thing is watching the computers. Because, you know, hand, Thing is a hand. So he's looking at feet on the internet and then when someone walks in thing like closes the laptop by the way if you like lurch you're in luck because this movie gives you a lot of lurch you get to see the origin story of lurch you get to see lurch learning how to play the adams family song with the help of thing there's even a point where lurch decides to sing and he sings a song that i don't know what it is but anytime a movie that wants to do a sad moment sing this song <laughs> I'm all about it. Everybody hurts sometimes. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a lot of good things to be said about this movie. So why am I saying it's just okay? Well, it's because of the plot, or shall I say plots. There are a lot of plots in this. And I understand that you're gonna wanna have a lot of plots in this because of the fact that you have a lot of different atoms. So you gotta make sure that every atom's got something to do. But it gets to the point where there's so many of them and a lot of them don't really go anywhere or they get to a point where they just keep going and going until we get to the last part of the movie and they're like, we gotta wrap everything up real quick. So they start the movie by showing off that Gomez and Morticia are getting married. People are running at them with fire and pitchforks wearing them out of town. That's the problem with the atoms. Anytime they live somewhere, nobody likes them there. They try to run them out of town. So eventually they go to a place where they feel like they would be at home. New Jersey. Along the way, they meet Lurch. They have a very funny way of showing where Lurch came from and how he just all of a sudden became their butler. So I thought that was a cool idea. And then they find this house. And the problem is the house they find is this old, nasty, dirty, haunted type house. But it's part of a neighborhood that this woman named Margot, played by Allison Janney, she has basically bought this entire neighborhood. She's the star of like this HGTV type show, like one of those like flip the house type shows. But she's going one step further and flipping the neighborhood. So not only is she making this entire neighborhood of brand new houses, but she of course has to fill in those houses. And the one house that she's got a problem with messing up the whole aesthetic is at Adam's house just sitting on top of the hill. So of course she tries to get them to redecorate the house and she wants to get them out of the house and so she can bulldoze the house down. Then you've got Morticia having problems with Wednesday they're starting to drift apart because Wednesday wants to go to public school and you have this whole thing about Wednesday going to public school making a new friend but the friend is the daughter of Margo the person that wants to run over the neighborhood meanwhile you got Pugsley over here trying to learn a sword fight because he has to basically go through his version of Adam's version of a bar mitzvah where he has to do the sword fight in front of the entire Adam's family and if he does it wrong the family's gonna basically get outcast but he instead wants to play more with explosives than swords then Margo has for some reason installed cameras inside of all of the houses but they don't even really say why are you gonna do anything with that no okay and she also has this social media network with the neighborhood that she's using to make rumors about the atoms to try to get the atoms kicked out as if them just being the atoms wasn't enough to get people to want to get them kicked out she's got to make up rumors about them as well so you can see there's a lot of stuff going on in here and the problem with jumping from plot to plot to plot is that nothing ever sticks so you don't really get too invested into anything or if there's something that you really really like and you get excited about it it gets stopped and then you have to watch some stuff that maybe you're not as excited about because some of the ideas in this movie are creative and interesting and other ideas are the generic stuff you would see in any basic level animated movie. You know there's something to be said about the fact that you are an animated movie and you can do anything you want with the Adams Family in animation, yet they did more creative things with the Adams Family in the live action movies than they did with the animated ones. The animated movie feels more live action than the live action movies do. <laughs> the live action movies feel more like cartoons. Hey man, maybe that's a nostalgia talking, but I'm just, I call it like I see it. I feel like that this movie would have worked better if you would have done like five or six episodes as a limited special series and you aired it either on like 
Disney or Nickelodeon or ABC Family as like a special Halloween event or you put it on a streaming service like Netflix or Hulu or Amazon and made it a special event. Flesh out these stories a little bit more because they just don't really go far, especially when you really enjoy a story. Like I really dug the storyline of Wednesday going to public school. That was a very funny bit because she treats it like a prison and she even goes up to the most popular girl in school and is like, I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me. And I'm like, oh shoot, now that's kind of interesting. But then once that kind of gets going, it's like, nope, we gotta go back to Pugsley now or nope, we gotta go back to Margo now. Every time something gets going, it stops and then at the very end they're like let's wrap everything up at once go and the other thing about the plots and this is gonna be probably more me because i have so much adam's history but i couldn't help but feeling like a lot of this stuff was retreading on stuff we've already seen the adams being in the house somebody wanted them out of that neighborhood so that someone else can take over the house that was kind of the plot of the first adam family movie like it was kind of done a little bit differently with the whole fester not knowing who he was and using that angle to get the house but it was still somebody wanted them out the cartoon that came out after the movies adams used to live next to the norman myers who was like these underwear salesmen and they wanted them out so bad because they didn't like living next door to the adams but the son, Normie Jr., became friends with the Adams and liked the Adams, just like the daughter of Margo, who wants them out of the neighborhood, becomes friends with Wednesday. So I'm like, this is just like in that cartoon. Even the whole Pugsley trying to learn this sword fight, it reminded me so much of the Mamushka, you know? Like, it was kind of that similar vibe. Again, this might be a little nitpicky about it, but it is kind of feeling like you're plucking some ideas from other Adams properties in the past and putting him in this. Even in the Adams Family movie, when they had Cousin It roll up in a car listening to Hammer, in this one, you got Cousin It rolling up into a car listening to Snoop, because Snoop is the voice of Cousin It, so they had to throw in a Snoop song. So Cousin It is up in his car, and they're seriously playing Snoop. But something I really have to give this movie credit for is a great homage they do at the very end of the movie. They recreate the complete opening theme of the Addams Family, but animate it with the new characters. So it's the entire opening, like the old show, same look, same everything, except with the new characters. Respect your roots. Wrapping it all up, man. I think there's some fun stuff in it. I think there's some cute stuff in it. And I just have a soft spot for the Adams, so I'm always willing to give the Adams a try. But I really do feel like this kind of has the vibe of either should have been a series or feels like a pilot to a series more so than a movie. Now, I get why they made it a feature length theatrical release because I saw that box office. Y'all know what y'all was doing. A little family friendly film to put out in October to put up against that clown. I got you. So it made sense and you made it work. And I would actually like to see more of this world of Adams as some kind of series. But whereas I look at like a movie like say Hotel Transylvania or Monsters Inc and go, that's a movie that was clearly made to be a movie. This feels like, you know, a series even though Monsters, Inc. is getting a series on Disney+, Plus and Hotel Transylvania had a series on Disney Channel. But you get what I'm saying. So if you want to put the Care Bear scale on it, I give Adams a fun shine. I think it definitely is entertaining, but at the same time, I feel like it could have been more. Do you have any plans of seeing the Adams Family this Halloween season? Or if you already saw it, what did you think of it? Did you enjoy it? You thought it was fine? Or do you feel like it could have been a little bit more or would have been better as a series of some kind, like a TV show? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new here, please subscribe and check out all the other videos that I've made in case you missed any. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000.